Um, so here we're going to go to uh, our next uh, uh, demonstration. Uh, so again, the GitHub uh, is the open Visus uh, uh, resource repository. Uh, we have a set of examples uh, for running Jupyter notebooks. I don't know if anybody here here uses Jupyter uh, or Python, but it's a nice way to do scripting. scripting. And uh, installation is very easy. If you have Python, I think 3.7, at least that's what I have. Uh, you can just type this line here, Python minus fm pip install. Uh, if you're a Python uh, expert, so you're very familiar with pip. And then uh, NumPy and uh, OpenVSUS uh, 1.33, that's a particular version that it's stable, and that's uh, how you download and install. Similar to Docker, this is the devoted to uh, particularly uh, Python. Uh, so, in this, in this way, way, we'll, we'll now show a couple of examples of installing that and then running the viewer. Uh, what's interesting now is the viewer, it's also just a Python script. Uh, so, uh, in fact, actually, you already saw that I uh, opened the uh, asteroid in the client. That's actually a piece of Python code that uses the, the Visus library. And uh, by being in Python, basically, you can easily customize, add, and remove menus, or make it part of uh, uh, another element in, uh, in your application. Um, by the way, so, there is still echo. Should I move to the demonstration? I don't know if people are trying to type quickly what's on the <laughs> page, page for the installation. Again, Python minus M and install user and so on. I think that's also on the OpenVSUS yeah. website. Let me double check. In the README uh, is there. Yes. So this is a different version. Um, yeah, yeah, this is just not. So by uh, here. Yeah. The instructions so, are the same. Just uh, here you see the Python install pip upgrade. So this is kind of a longer version. Uh, but uh, we're now using 1.33. We need to update here. We have 1.2. Yeah. 182. I don't know if they're really significantly different. Yeah. Uh, uh, you cannot hear me. I on that. And then there are a few yeah. examples. Um, Steve, should I start first with the? Yeah. You can. Can you hear me image, first image of all? Uh, yes. Use the image first. Yeah. Just uh, to to show the Python scripting. Okay. And then I'll I'll switch to you. For then, then, no, you can you can do that uh, as well. You did you did try the install with Python and, and run the Jupyter notebook. We can do it from your side if you can hear me. Okay. Uh, do you still have the echo problem? A bit, yes, it's still there. Because I cannot work with you and have you on mute. So, but worst case, you can share your screen and just do it. Okay, no, but let's do it on your side so that you can we can use the asteroid data uh, that you have still there. So you can do the okay the viewer with the scripting with the image. You still do you still have it? Uh, okay, so first of all, I'll just do the installation. I'll, I'll look for my PowerShell. Maybe I need to open another one. Ah, no. So here we do Python pip install. And uh, oops. Uh, you are you are in the folder, yeah. You are in the right folder already, I think. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can try directly to run the try try to do uh there was Yeah, but I'm doing the PP installation. Yeah, yeah it, it 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 did already. But since it was already there installed, uh, it uh, is just using that. Yeah, you see, already yeah. satisfied. So it it, is, it will install NumPy and Open Resource. Yeah. So now this is the directory with the installation in Python. Uh, you can see it's uh, well. I mean, your user application data roam in Python. Python 3.7, that's the version Python I'm using. And then under site packages, there is OpenVSUS, and this is the top directory. And so you can launch Python and simply import OpenVSUS. Maybe I should do that first. Yeah. Or we can show it through a Jupyter notebook if you want. Yeah, let's yeah, start simple and then. Okay. So first of all, so the Python. Oops. So one can load and that has everything in there. Um, this is viewer. So you can launch the viewer from this batch file, uh, visus.bat. Obviously, under Windows, you can also double click on that. And again, this is just Python code. And now you have a full visus viewer. Yes. So I now I'll take a particular data set. File. Open URL. Okay, so this data set uh, is an image uh, collected actually from a large facility from the National Science Foundation. This one we're streaming from uh, our server in Utah. Oops, what did I do? And so what's interesting that in addition to the regular analysis, the regular visualization aspect, um, we can bring out a Python window on the right. It's called scripting. And so for example, in this case, we wanted to see, like, let's uh, try and segment those regions so with a snow. Snow. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's a very simple, simple thing, thing just, just so solving people. people. And uh, uh, so the, what we do is say, okay, in the Python scripting, we do kind of a generic uh, uh, processing. And uh, this is something I did on the side, I'll, I'll show in detail what I'm doing here, but you have a full, simple Python uh, console. Uh, let's go through that very quickly. So here, RBG, those are the three channels, um, is loading the data set. So you, you have this array called input that is the, that has the data that you see on the picture. So it has the uh, three channels, uh, 0, 1, 2, because of the, um, the it's an RGB color image. Uh, so that comes in basically from a NumPy array. Uh, and then we, we call input 1 a combination of R, G, and B. B. Uh, and then we decide what is uh, a threshold that we want to do to filter the data. So once we compile, so it becomes a grayscale image, and then we do this array utils threshold input one and LO is the threshold and, and the, the, the keyword, keyword that is needed in case things don't work. work. 
and then uh, the pound is a comment, so I can flip from regular image, and output is another keyword. So input and output are the image that comes in, and the image goes out for visualization. Um, so if I do run now here, uh, I have segmented this data set, and of course it is computed in real time. As I move it, it's not computed the whole thing up because it is actually very large. Uh, being a Python script, I can go in and, for example, change my threshold. Uh, again, this is very simple, but I think illustrate the potential flexibility. So this could be 200 instead of 240, and now the, three, the filter is different. And also, I wrote this commenting away. Um, so if I comment the new the output, output and I simply do output, output like input, input, I go back to the original image so I can flip back and forth. Okay, so but the idea is very simple but yet powerful. You have a full Python interpreter. You have this variable input and other variable output that you read the data that you see on the screen, and then you write the data that goes back to the screen. So you add this filter to that on the fly, and there you can bring in all the machine learning, image, and all kind of library that come from Python because it's. It's uh, just a full Python interpreter. Okay. Any question about this? So very uh, simple, but basically connects so uh, to a very powerful infrastructure. Uh, so I don't know if we should maybe seg to any kind of demo that is more similar, more similar to this, this one. one. And then we will go to Peter. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm muting them. Can you hear me? So someone should make Aniket presenter. Okay. So can you make Aniket? Yeah. So can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what. Just that I'm trying to see if I can remove this. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm showing you a data set uh, which is a CD scan. It's a 3D volume. We are only seeing a subset of the data. Uh, this is what Valerio explained, uh, and I'm showing you. Can you tell me more about the data? Yeah, so the data is a CD scan of uh, MITI design images. Uh, it's about uh, 3,000 slices. Each slice is uh, 200 by 200 uh, at a coarser resolution. So you see at full resolution, it's about 700 uh, by 700 pixels. So uh, the first demo that I'll be showing you is how to pre-process uh, this data. So. Uh, so in the data, you can see that there are three rings, which are three cylinders in, in 3D. Uh, the outer uh, cylinders are uh, artifacts from CT reconstruction. The actual data which we are interested in is only in the uh, center. So if you want to pre-process the data, you could just do uh, um, some uh, Python scripting in pieces to extract only the uh, center piece. So I've written a script uh, which is completely in Python. Uh, so you could use, as said, you could use uh, packages or you could write your own code and then execute that code inside pieces. So what is this doing right now is that uh, we want to extract uh, the, the centermost cylinder. So uh, we're com computing the gradient uh, image. Once the gradient is computed, we can then threshold the gradient to find the innermost circle. And then we can compute uh, half transform to get the radius in the center of the circle and then extract that circle from the data. So along with that, we are also doing some uh, analysis here that is to compute the number of holes in this particular data set. So when I close these, so, so these are the results of the analysis, which says what is the distribution of the holes. So when I close these images, you would be able to see in the viewer how the data looks after it's been processed. 
And similar to what Valeria mentioned earlier, we could switch this. So this is the view of the data that is processed. And if you want to see the view of the holes, you could also do that. So then you read on the script, it would do all the computations on the fly and you would be able to uh, see where these holes are in 3D. So you could uh, extract them uh, and do analysis. So this is one of the demos. So you can go back to your original data by removing the script. And then the second demo I want to show you is to do uh, a Gaussian filtering in 3D. Uh, which is again just a script. So you see it's running on the fly and then you can see that uh, this image is now uh, a smooth filtered version of the original data. So you can go ahead and then change some parameters in the script where I can say what is the radius of the blur that I want to apply. So if I increase the, the radius, then you would see that uh, it's processing and yeah, so you see now it's it's a more uh, a blurred version of the the input data. So yeah, so you could do this, and then uh, uh, once you're satisfied, you can export this as a raw image, uh, raw file, and then um, pass it on to other downstream tools and uh, pipelines that you're familiar working with. Yeah, so do you want to add something, Valerio? What? Uh, do you want to add something or should I move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah, move on. Okay, so now I'll show you uh, an example of running this from a Jupyter notebook. So in this example, what you'll be seeing is that uh, I'm actually loading a raw uh, image from my hard drive and then passing that image as an input to Vsys. So you have... have, have uh, a numpy array, which is a, 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 the numpy array is numpy reshaped a, to the size, size of the, the, size of the, so there is an echo, the echo, Okay. You can go ahead yeah. now. Yeah. So you can load a raw file uh, as an numpy array, convert that, reshape it to the size, the 3D, uh, actual 3D uh, volume. Um, and then you can provide that as an input to Vsys. So you see here that uh, uh, I'm calling the scripting now or adding a user input. The, the variable name is Beetle, and then I'm giving the uh, NumPy array as a Vsys array to the script. So now if I run this uh, example from Jupyter Notebook, it'll open uh, uh, the Vsys viewer. And uh, in a second, you should be able to now see the data. So you could go to palette, change the palette, uh, and then do that. And then in the scripting, if you see, you have output is equal to Beetle. Beetle was the input that was provided as a, a user input from the uh, Jupyter Notebook. So then you could also uh, send the data back uh, to the Jupyter and then continue doing process in Jupyter. So yeah, that's that's all I have from my side. Okay.